Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes here back. Welcome back to some AP Statistics. I'm running through the lessons from StatsMedic, and I really encourage you to see what Luke and Lindsay are doing there. Go to StatsMedic.com, and you guys can see a whole bunch of different things, and they've got some sister websites that can really help you do some real-life stuff first to help you explain the math that's happening later. So today what we're doing is we're asking the question, how much of a Justin Timberlake fan are you? Or actually, probably the better question is, how much of a fan is the Justin Timberlake fans of Justin Timberlake? So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. So Justin Timberlake's concert promoter is wanting to know how the concert goers are enjoying the experience. So he wants to ask the attenders from 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, um, how much did you enjoy the concert? And so what they ended up doing was they blocked this off into squares. And so there's 16 equally sized sections, four rows, remember rows go across, columns go up and down, and the stage runs along the northern edge of this. So actually, Justin should probably be over here. But anyway, so this is the stage is on this side. Okay, so then what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to go through and say, all right, so how do we pick out a sample? So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to basically number these different sections. So these sections here... I've got one, two, does it matter how I number them? No, just so long as you have a system. So I'm going to number all of these sections, and then I'm going to use a random number generator to pick four sections, okay? Uh, 13, 14, 13. Mr. Hayes can count. Yay! So now over here, remember what we need to do is clear out of here. So we're going to quit. And for the random number generator, remember, it's going to be underneath your math button. And then we're going to go over to probability. And we're going to choose random integer. So number five. And again, remember, you could just click the number five. That would be easier too. Our lowest number is going to be one. Our highest number is going to be 16. And we want to pick four. I'm going to pick, remember, a couple of extra just in case the numbers get picked more than once because there's TI doesn't work that in. So we're going to take the first four that don't repeat. I got to get rid of that extra number there. Ignore the 9. So I hit enter. There we go. See, actually, there. 16 happened twice, but I don't care. Actually, 4 happened again. I just want these first four. So for me, my sample is going to be this group of seats. Oops, hold on. Let me jump back here. So section 6. Now I lost my numbers. Good job, Hayes. Okay. 6, 16, 4, and 13. Those are going to be the four areas that I'm going to tell the concert promoter, promoter to sample out. So now we're saying, okay, well, maybe there's a different way to do it. Let's choose one from each row. Okay? So again, we're going to just call it, you know, we're going to go one through four. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to do this four times. I'm going to pick four numbers from one through four, four times. One for the first row, second, third, fourth row. Okay? So we're going to go back to our calculator. Apparently F4, oh, sure, that makes sense. Never mind. Sorry, my quick keys to change scenes. Now, if you wanted to, you don't care about that. If you wanted to, you could actually go here and hit second entry, and then just go back and change this to a four if you wanted to. Just make sure you delete that one out. So for the first row, so we're picking the numbers one through four, four times. So I'm going to the first one. Now, this one, we don't care if it repeats because, again, we're talking about each row is separate. So this one here, I'm choosing the second row. I pick the first row. I pick the, I mean, not the first row, the first seat in the second row, the fourth seat in the third row, and then the first seat back there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. It's like, oh, what happens if we do this? What happens if we do it vertically? Okay, this is also called stratified. Stratified is a sample where you end up picking a random number from a subset, or kind of like, you know, of different layers of what you're talking about. Um, we'll talk more about that when we start formalizing this. So actually, now if you just hit enter, it will run this again. So for this one, I'm going column, so I'm going to call this one, two, three, four. So this time here, I've got four, the fourth one, the second one, and the second one. Now take a second and think about which one of these methods would be best. Which one of the methods would give the concert promoter the best information? Okay. Now, I'm not sure what you said, but eventually in class discussion it comes back to this, because sometimes the groups will kind of argue, because usually people are doing this in groups of four. 
Um, and I have the groups kind of discuss everything through. And you guys couldn't see any of that because Mr. Hayes is a pain. Sorry, there we go, 4422. I always forget to transi transitioning back. I know you guys deserve better, I'm sorry. So which method do you think back? And they will usually settle on here on the horizontal. Now, a lot of people at least start. Most people don't do columns, but most people argue between these two. They're like, well, this is a simple random sample. We need to go through with that. That's what we did the last time. It's the best. A lot of people say, well, wait a second. Here, though, we get somebody from the first row, and we, we make sure we get the two middle sections separately, and we get the last one. So we kind of get a sense of where everybody's at. So uh, most of the time, the groups will settle, a majority of the groups settle on the horizontal one. And they usually say here something to the effect of because um, how far away your seat is from your seat is from the stage can affect your experience or changes your experience. Let me do it that way. Interesting side note, true story. Um, Billy Joel, big 70s and 80s person, your, your parents love them, um, will actually figure that the fans who really want to come see him and not be seen tend to don't mind buying the seats way in the back. And so he will often, most of his shows will send some of his people in the back and talk with people to see who's like really, really big fans. And he doesn't sell the seats in the front row and he brings them forward in the middle of the, or uh, for the concert, which I thought was kind of cool. I don't know about Justin, but. Now, what we're gonna do on page two is we're gonna actually put some numbers with this because remember, the concert promoter up here was gonna have everybody judge it from one to 10. So what that does is this. I'm gonna split it like this. Um, here are the numbers. So these are the samples in each of these different areas, okay? So for each of the three samples, we're gonna go through and we're gonna average these out. So like for me, I would average 9.4 plus 6 was 8.3 plus 13 was 5.1 and then 16 was 5.4. Okay, so you're going to add all those up, average it out. For the second one, I had 9.8 plus, let's see, group 8.1 plus in the third row, I had 7.0 plus, and then back the back corner again of 5.1. So divide that through by four, divide that through by four, and then I've got these two here, 8.2 plus 8.3. Now I'm gonna trust that you can go through and finish the math on this, so I'm not going to go through necessarily. Just make sure you type into the calculator, right? Okay. Actually, here, let me pause it quick, and I'll go ahead and do it for you, because I'm feeling kind of bad that I wouldn't. Hey, I'm back. I know you miss me. Um, here are your averages for those three samples. And so then what ends up happening next is you have the class, each person in the class goes through, and they will go through and plot these. Okay. So this is an example of what I had for my classes last year. So, so for example, here... For the first one, it was purely random, simple random sample. You can see how it's all spread out through here. You can see stratified by row, we have this, and they're all kind of clustered around 7.5. So actually, my number would have been low. So if I would have had this, I, this one would have been here. My number from 7.5 would have been here, and 6.85 would have been about somewhere in here. Okay? So now, what do you notice about the three different methods here? Somebody will usually say in the discussion, these look kind of fairly spread out. These ones are really closely and tight. And then I will usually say, well, what's the word we use for how spread out data is? Somebody will usually say, oh, yeah, that's variability. This one has the least variability. I thought simple random samples were supposed to be best. Okay, something to think about. So when we talk about which method was best, rows was the least variables. Okay. 
in how we measuring variables, normally you could do something like, you know, what, standard deviation or something like this. We're just going to talk about as shown by spread. Because this one is easy enough that we can kind of eyeball it. Okay. So what you need to end up doing for this, and again, this kind of goes back to that bias thing we were talking about last section. Okay, you're going to choose your strata, and that's what we, remember we call these stratified. The strata is what you're dividing everything into. So for example, with people, you might draw, you know, do it by gender, you might do it by ethnicity, you might do it by education, age, things like that. So there's all sorts of strata that you tend to collect on people. But you're going to choose the strata by... Uh, two things. One, what characteristics? Characteristics um, might affect the responses. So like in this case here, we talked about how how far away you are from the stage would kind of affect your experience. If you're up close and personal, you might think it's actually awesome. If you're in the back, you'd be like, oh, look, Justin's so small. Okay, so that's going to affect it. So that's one of the reasons why rows worked more consistently than the other two. And then two, the other thing you're going to look for is you want low variability. So this might be one of those things where, you know, you actually do a test sample first, and you can kind of play around with it to see what happens. All right? So that's the basics of setting these things up and how stratify samples work. Link down below. We're going to go through and formalize this a little bit. So... See you in about 30 seconds.